Hi, Grandpa. Burning another straw pile, I see. Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Today I'm here with Grandpa, and Grandpa's burning a straw pile, which is just awesome, just in case we seed this field. And I'm now officially seeding again. This is my first time. needs to be burnt before it rains, otherwise we won't get it burnt. Yes. <laughs> a little bit east of here it was snowing, um, quite a bit of wet snow. Was it? Yes. How do you know? Well, I was just over there. Oh, so we haven't got any. It, it spit a little bit this morning, you know. We don't have any snow on the ground, but it was just, it was really starting to come down. I see this wind has blowed the dirt up against that straw pile, and that won't burn very good to burn underneath it, but we'll get up yes. eventually. I don't know if he's going to see this or not, but I thought I'd better burn it. The wind is blowing the right way. It's smoky. Yes, it is. Very. Look where the dirt blowed up against the sap, up against the straw. Wow. So it'll have to burn underneath to get that. Putting a little bit of smoke out the way. Yeah, quite a bit. It was worse a little while ago. Wow. How long did it take to burn? Oh, I've been here about an hour. Is today the right conditions to burn straw piles? I don't know. <laughs> I just decided I'd burn it. I didn't know if he was going to see it, so I, and the wind was blowing the right way. There is quite a lot of smoke. Oh, it was really smoky a little while ago. Couldn't hardly see nothing. It's cold out, you know. My, my thermometer says 36 degrees. I bet it would be. Kind of feels that cold. Well, thank you, Grandpa. Thank it was you. wonderful to see you this morning. All right, thanks. Now I am in the tractor, and uh, Dad has stepped out, so I'm going to try it by myself. I'm going to increase the RPM, step on the clutch, and release the clutch and I'm off. So now that I've come to my guidance line, I hit guidance. Now I'm sinking the plow and I'm now officially seeding again. This is my first time. Dad's just walking me through it the first time because this is my first time ever spring seeding. So we are planting barley right now. I did do winter seeding, which was in last fall in 2021. So it, I'm just so excited to be back in the drill again. It looks like there's quite a lot of straw in this field. It was cut pretty high because there's a lot of hills. So it was hard for the swather to do. And now the drill has to go through all of that. I'm going 4.2 miles an hour, so I can speed up to about 4.8 to 5. I'm in eighth gear. My motor is running 2,000 RPM, and my fan is running, which is super important to always look out for because this is an air drill, and it uses air to push the seed and fertilizer into the ground. So if the fan's not running, you completely plug your whole drill, and that's very bad. I have done that before. So this is my first pass back in the driver's seat, and I couldn't be happier. Darcy's just right over here, so we're seeding this field back to back because I actually harvested it this last harvest, so I'll insert some footage. It's super scary. We're on the steep part right now. I'm a little bit nervous to go down it. I did this field my first year ever harvesting full time when I was 15, which was two years ago. You have to just be really careful. My dad had made sure to radio to me to put it in first gear. It's the scary part is you become so tilted in the combine, feels like your whole combine's going to topple over. I don't know if you can tell, but the angle I'm at is really steep. It's where I found all the hawk feathers and this was the big hill field. So Darcy has the big hill passes and I have the other half which is further east. That's what I'm doing right now. And part of the reason why we're keeping our fields in a continuous crop rotation is so that we don't, is so that we don't have to spray them because of how expensive spray is now. Say that again, I couldn't hear you. Pay attention at the corners. Click them in, click them out. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. 
Yes, I will. Thank you. Dad was just telling me to pay attention at my corners and make sure that I click the implement fully in. And also when I come to the end of my corner, I click it fully out and I make sure that I'm not backing the drill up. And what that means is the boots are, are going backwards rather than forwards and that fills them with dirt. And when they're filled with dirt, the seed and fertilizer aren't able to come out. And then we have to completely unplug all of the plugged ones and it takes quite a bit of time and since we only have two drills and it takes one of the drills out of the field which is really not great i don't have much further to go and then i have my corner so that's very exciting it's going to be my first turn since i got back in the drill so now i've officially done all of the processes on the farm from winter seeding to harvest so that's just incredible rolling harrowing disking driving truck lots of different things so I'm waiting for this corner to finish plowing and notice that it's out here. Now I lift up the plow, I turn around, I make sure to click it up, and I make sure that I don't wind the drill up too much, and that I straighten out. I hit guidance, which I basically lined it up perfectly, so I'm pretty proud of myself. And then I, oh, I don't think I put the drill in soon enough. I definitely should have put the drill in a little bit sooner, but I wanted to make sure it was straight and wasn't backing up. So I might go over that little part again just to make sure it's seeded. I'm going to speed back up to five miles an hour and continue seeding. Now Darcy's headed up this way on the hill, passes. He's almost finished with the very steep portion and I'm on a bit more of a rolling hill area. The shifting lever is right here and I pull it back to come all the way and park only when I'm fully stopped though. I have a clutch and I do use the clutch in this tractor. You don't have to, but I always use it. Whereas I really don't use it in the new John Deere tractor we have that's hooked up to the roller. These other three are my hydraulics. The second one lifts the wings of the drill as well as the third one and then the fourth is the fan and you can see hydraulics running here so the back one always needs to be on because that's your fan and you always need that air pressure to push the seed and fertilizer out the second one's the wings you want to make sure that's not on and then this front one here is your implement in the ground and if you hear that click noise the hydraulic turns on and it's fully still trying to push that implement further into the ground when it's already as far as it can go so I just do one more tap and it shuts that hydraulic off so it's not continuously running. There was a wet snow a little bit east of here, so I'm really hoping that that snow will kind of move here and we can get some moisture after we've seeded this field. I often look back just to check to make sure all of the pods are intact, which is what all the hoses are attached to, and then make sure all of the hoses are still connected to the shank which is connected to the boot. So basically just check that everything's still working and seeding properly. I have what's called a toe between, which means the tank is between the implement and the tractor. So I can't see the portion of shanks that are directly behind the tank, whereas Darcy has a pull behind so he can see his whole implement. So I've now completely made it through the seeded. I pick up my drill and I start to turn when I pick it up because it won't have backed up yet. Now I'm turning and I'm just making sure not to wind it up too much. And I'm lining up with my next pass here. I'm gonna hook up to guidance, which I'm now set to. And now I watch this inside part of the implement to make sure it's going straight, which it is. And that's when I sink the plow in. And again, I did it a little bit late there. And I actually have, I think, possibly even three passes on this side. So I should have been a lot more precise with where I put the plow in the ground. And it's not really a plow, it's a drill, but it the word's a little bit interchangeable. I didn't really pull back my RPM on that turn, but I was at 4.8, so I'm gonna go back up to five. Darcy's now headed down the hill again, so that's pretty cool. Even though these tractors have auto steer and drive themselves, I think it's a big misconception that farmers can really do anything while in the tractor cab because it's so important to spend the majority of your time looking back at your drill, making sure if you see rocks, watch them go through, making sure all the shanks are attached and everything is cohesive and running well because these are very expensive machines and with the cost 
price of everything going up on a farm, it's very hard to keep the farm going. So you really have to save where you can. And a lot of that is just trying to make your equipment last longer and work well, as well as making good financial decisions on the good years so that you still have something in the bank for the bad years. To me, everything looks good. Again, I can't see those shanks behind the implement, but you look at them when you turn around. So you not only have everything going on when you're making your turn, but you also want to make sure to check your drill. Because if I seeded all of this and five or six feet weren't seeding, we'd have to go over it again. And that's really costly, especially with the price of fertilizer right now. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to learn a little bit more about how your food gets to your table. You can also follow Kate's Egg on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G, and on TikTok, Facebook, and Pinterest. Or you can visit the Kate's Egg website, www.katesag.com, and see my wonderful Kate's Egg tote bag. Thank you again for watching. Bye!